Hey everybody, welcome to the Plains People Podcast. My name is Mark Caviglio, and this is a podcast I do in my basement, talk to people from the Fargo, Moorhead area, and collect their life stories. Today, this is episode 11, coming out on September 2nd, talking to local artist Spencer Kelly, also a pretty good friend of mine. He's he's had a spot down at Seagrave Studio for, I want to say, a couple years. Does some really good art. I have some of it hanging on my walls. This is a really good talk, and I'm excited to share it with you. So here we go. Episode 11, Spencer Kelly, local artist. Welcome to the Plains People Podcast. Let's get weird for an hour and a half. I'll kick you in the fucking face. You're like one of those weirdos that collects Reader's Digest and thinks they're going to be valuable someday. If the if a grandma has ever read wrote, read it, read, I don't read. collect anything. <laughs> you, <laughs> Did you see all the empty beer bottles? <laughs> this is like your this is like your shame closet of collectibles. It's a room. <laughs> shame room. <laughs> Let's just have sex. That's more entertaining for everybody. Even just like listening. To Are we recording? Sex yeah, dude. So you don't introduce anything. You just like he just starts recording out of nowhere, and and then yeah, we're gonna chop all this out. Well, oh, okay. Well, maybe not. Maybe I don't know. you can use this know. for your EDM, and then the rest can be an actual interview. All right, I'm ready. Can I name Spencer that? Kelly? My name is Spencer Kelly. All right. Um, where'd you get that white T-shirt? Don't you like introduce the podcast or anything? Do you introduce yourself? <laughs> no, I did that already. Oh. You go, yep. I'm Marco Viglio. That already happened. Oh, okay. I see. You just don't know because I haven't recorded it yet. Was I upstairs watching TV? No, because I haven't recorded it yet. Oh, you're going to do that later. Yeah. yeah. All right. No, you go ahead and white shirt. So where'd you get your white shirt? I fucking got it at Walmart, dude. Like a packet of them? A large packet, yeah. Of how many? Um, Wait, I lied. Actually, it was from... Uh, see, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Marshall's, I think, for the place that's going out Marshall's? of business. Marshall's? Herburgers. Herburgers is going out of business, there right? There you go. In, yeah. in the mall. Yeah. So they had like this big blowout sale. Oh, wow. I got like a bunch of t-shirts and underwear that don't fit me right. So these are like smalls. I'm not I'm not a small. No, you're not. Tell. You're an XL. You can kind of see. I'm an XL, too. The, sh- the sleeves don't quite fit. It kind of looks like I'm a stripper or something. Yeah, they're they're definitely... Uh, it looks like a slim fit t-shirt. Actually, it doesn't look that bad. I don't know. My girlfriend likes it. You grow up around here? No. <laughs> Where were you born? Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona? Yeah. I did not know that about you. Well, I don't usually like tell people. I mean, I only... <laughs> What's up, Phoenix? <laughs> I only lived there for like two years. Okay. My parents so until the age of two? Uh, yeah, or like three or something you know toddler age i don't remember anything about it but i've gone back since then to visit my old house nice my parents actually had this nice little one-story uh, house to with a nice yard that didn't they don't have you know grass in phoenix or yeah, arizona because they have desert they have they have water shortage so they just have like pebble lawns yeah that's what stuff. i heard and like sometimes they have palm trees out front because they don't need any water uh, but in the back, they actually had, my parents actually had a pool, and oh. apparently I almost drowned it at once. Nice, when you were two? Uh, yeah, around there. Uh, what do your parents do, like, for, for a living? How do they make money? The reason my dad was in Arizona is because, uh, for like 20, or like 15-something years, he was um, a computer technician. He was kind of like a tech support for a, a computer company, uh, so... He would get moved around a lot. Uh, most of his uh, work was actually just done at in the home, but like in Phoenix, he had his own office, so he had to like move down there for the office stuff. Okay, but like after, computer technician is that what he said? Uh, yeah. What does that mean? Well, like, like you fix computers? He yeah, he does like tech support. Okay. Basically, he went to college for math in the <laughs> you know. In the frickin' 70s or something. Yeah, and now we have a new math, so yeah. everything so, he learned is absolutely... No, he actually got a leg up, because he's, cause he's like... he was. There was no, you know, computer majors back yeah. then. Yeah. So, math was the closest you could get. And 
He, uh, and they probably the... worked on the closest thing they had to computers back then, so yeah. he was familiar with them. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I feel bad, like, recapping my dad's history, because I have, like, no idea what the timeline's <laughs> like. He was in the Air Force at one point for a okay. little while. He, then he went to, uh, he, uh, he was also in college for a little while. Yeah. And then for, like, 15 years, he supported the family by being a computer technician while my mom, so, like, co-supported the family by being a nurse. So she was a nurse? Yeah. Okay. See, I don't feel bad about the whole not knowing your dad's timeline. I've learned, like, three things from my dad's past in my entire life. And they're all like, oh, yeah, I lived in I lived in Portland once. I'm like, what? You did? Here we go. I'm like, what? And then I went down to Denver for my year anniversary, and he's like, yeah, I lived outside Denver for a while. I'm like, what? When did that happen? Just weird, weird stuff. Like, he's, he's like a whatever he's a mystery so think, yeah so don't feel too bad well dads don't really like they don't talk they, talk about their, you know, themselves yeah much. why would you that doesn't have anything to do with raising a kid it's not like well you know when i was five i i learned how to eat my veggies so get on it you know no one does that uh i've anyways. always liked veggies i never had a problem eating my veggies yeah i've always like i've always liked all food i i actually i got nothing against ingredients is if it's prepared right i'll eat it like i don't get the people who are like oh i don't eat tomatoes just why not, man? They're tomatoes. They're great. Uh, anyways, um, I don't want to offend the producer. He looks like a pick eater. <laughs> he does kind of, actually. <laughs> Even though he's big. All right, anyways. Um, I wasn't going to say that. Big dude. and beautiful. Okay. <laughs> so, where'd you move after you guys left Arizona? Um, uh, we went to Nashville, New Hampshire after that. What? What's the name of <coughs> sneeze, sneeze, New Hampshire. Oh man, your cats are getting to me right when the interview starts. That's always how it you happens. slept here last night. That's true, and I was fine <laughs> the whole day. Okay, so a little backstory: we closed the bar last night, knowing we were going to do this interview, <laughs> and it's we we started around whatever one fifteen in the afternoon, and I had to eat greasy pizza. That's Capone, the cat. I'd eat greasy pizza and drink Gatorade for us to do this, and. Yeah, so if we sound like we're uh, under the weather, it's because we're we close the bar. I feel fine. I just have allergies. I went to sleep at about 5 last night. Oh, yeah? Well, we were all asleep already. 4.30. Yeah, no, you guys were all... I, I did at least one Snapchat of, of three people passed out on my giant couch together. It was yeah, it's cute. amazing. You put on a show you've seen a million times with your friends, and they all fall asleep. What, Rick and Morty? <laughs> yeah. Is that like, what we watched last Everybody night? had seen it. I love... No, Nicole hasn't. Oh, okay. Ha! That's why you put it on. Yeah. I got gotcha. That's your go. Oh, oh, also because... That's what I do when... I, you don't want to discover a new thing when you're drunk. You want to watch the? You want to watch something you love? Time. You guys didn't let me put on a, a Goodfellas or Shawshank. Is what I wanted to watch. When did I like obstruct you from putting those movies on? I don't remember doing that. All right, kitten's using his big tail to hook all the wires and keeps trying to rip the microphone off the stand. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to touch the table. Sorry for that vibration that might have <laughs> rang through. Okay. All right, so where where in New Hampshire? Nashua, New Hampshire. Nashua. It's a little, little town. Well, like um, an N, Nashua. Nashua, yeah. Nashua. It's I think. That's New, like that's so. That's not the capital of New Hampshire. No, it it's definitely tiny... isn't. Uh, Concord, New Hampshire. That's right. You okay. know how I remember that? Because you have a new hamster and he chewed on the Concord. <laughs> Is that how you remember it? Fourth grade, dude. That's very, <laughs> that's very impressive, actually. Yeah. No, what's up? I, I have all the idioms for a bunch of them. I know that uh, Topeka is a. Uh, uh, no, Kansas. Kansas, yeah. Yeah. Yep. There you go. It's not uh, Kansas City. No, it isn't. And That's Kansas it. City is also not only in Kansas; it's also in Missouri. Yeah. So uh, it's, off, it's it's split. Off topic a little bit. Oh, uh, that's what we, we do here. We've we got an hour and a half to talk about your twenty. We're just remembering years, all the state capitals. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's really another inter- good one? Um, that's a real interesting. Annapolis podcast. in Maryland is yeah. because there's Anna and Mary in the names. Oh, I always remember that one. I was, I was always thought that they made apples. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, ne- I didn't know that one. An apples. <laughs> and an apple is. <laughs> All right. You know it's it's close. Worst tangent. This is a this is just a just bad podcast already. <laughs> leave the bad, I'm gonna leave the cap off because I keep fidgeting with it. I'm yeah, that's fine. Concentrate. Okay, um, Nashua, New Hampshire. Me too. I'm fidgeting too. So what you guys? So New Hampshire. I forget that's even a state. Like who goes? Like, it's so East it's, Coast, I've never been yeah, really to the East Coast. It's not even, like, close to the ocean or anything. It's kind of like, um, you know, it, 
Stephen King esque town, basically. That's Maine. Yeah, I know, but it's basically. But it's like a New that. England. It's a small New England town. Small New England town with the same. So type there's of like weather, rabid you know? dogs and no. like like what? people looking for bodies. No. Uh, no. Prisons. Nothing happens. That's the point of the Stephen King like, universe. <laughs> I just said things that happen. Things that don't, King's you know, universe. like, so they live in this quiet little town, right? And the whole point of Derry in the movie It was that nothing ever happens. No, so the nobody... whole point is that kids disappear over there all the time and no one cares. Yeah, because nothing ever happens. And also that sounds like the, something happening. And because the clown is like messing with their main minds or something. Bad example. All right, another scene. <laughs> another he Stephen chose King the one that had the most going on in the town. Whatever. Okay, pet cemetery. Nothing ever happens okay. there. Yeah. Except the animals come out because there's a pet was, cemetery. How scary was that Indian, zombie Indian baby Indian in that movie? Gage. That was oh actually kind of creepy. I wonder what, how they got the kid to act like that. That was kind of <sighs> just like. Yeah, and they're just slicing somebody up with a scalpel. Yeah, I wish that. Oh man, that movie's great. I wish I knew like which parts of that were like just a dummy kid because they didn't actually like have the kid handle a scalpel. A scalpel. Yeah, why not? It was probably just dull. Probably just wasn't. <laughs> they didn't give him a razor sharp scalpel. That's pretty fucked up, man. <laughs> Gave him a movie scalpel. It's probably like rubber or something. It's been a while since I saw that movie. Kind of freaked me out. Dude, I love that movie. The movie's great. The second one uh, uh, has the uh, the dude from Shawshank Redemption, the uh, the captain of the guards, murders Edward Furlong. How weird is that? That's a thing that happened in the second Pet Cemetery. Okay. Oh, moving. the second. Okay. Yeah, in the second one. Uh, moving did, on. So, so hang on. No, more, more branching off of that. New off Hampshire. Off. Okay, fine. We'll go back. I knew this was going to be a train wreck right when we started. Whatever. That's why you have an editor, right? I mean, We don't edit. Just cut the no. whole... We, we, I'm going to cut out some of the beginning, and that's it. And then we're going to put an outro and intros on them. Okay. The magic. The make of the magic. You guys just peered behind the curtain. And I'm just a normal guy, <laughs> it's guys. Like, it's like director's commentary in, inside In the middle the of it. Yeah, it's just, just out of nowhere. Interrupting. Stanley Kubrick's like, well, we, we put the camera on the back of his, his big wheel. I can't wait to see yeah. how monotone my voice sounds. When I re- listen to this again, I'm probably not going to listen to this honestly. Well, you better share it. <laughs> I'll share it, but I'm not going to listen. Uh, it. Now, yeah, compete with uh, the other people who had the highest. I think like Safely's is at like 27. Beat beat Safely's. Okay. Yeah, and I just wrote Mailman for him, Luke Safely, Mailman. I've never really. I, I've only talked to Luke Safely once. That's actually my favorite podcast I did because Luke's cool as shit. Remember that one? No, no, the Billy was down here for that one. Huh. And, guess, number one. and you know how I managed to talk to him for more than 10 seconds? Mm. I brightened you up. I said, hey, Mark told me a story about you guys when you were teenagers. And then he started talking to me. He doesn't talk to me if I just am like, hey, Luke, uh, what's new with you? Yeah. He's basically he's just like, yeah, get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't. I love Luke. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's great. Uh, no, he really is. He's one of my favorites. Not that I really do that that often. I mean, uh, to be fair, I don't, like, go out. I don't, you know... Put myself out there enough, you know. Yeah, it's pretty. the one thing we don't have in common is you're like an introvert, outrovert, like like yeah, whatever it is. But you're like, hey, when you open up my cage, I'm crazy, but I'm not really gonna venture out of my cage. That's kind of like we're the same thing then. No, because I'm always out. I don't have a cage. I burnt it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, as yeah. I'm always, I'll walk up to but a stranger want, and I'm like that. You, but won't. you want it back. That's the thing. Yeah, you burnt your cage and you want your cage back. Uh, Despite all my rage, okay. Uh, I'm still just a mark in a cage. <laughs> That's a t-shirt. Tell you okay. what, we can skip over Nashua, honestly. Wait, wait, I how thought, long did you live there? The only thing that I, I remember being interesting about Nashua was... Uh, the name? I, had a, I mean, it was like... I'll say exactly what I said before. It's just like a Stephen King S town because nothing ever happened. But you always get the feeling that something you know sinister was going on. But kind there of like, never was. It was Nashua, New Hampshire. Is it like hot fuzz? Like you assumed there was like some underground yeah. society in this tiny little town. Uh, the I like didn't really neighborhood feel, watch. I didn't really feel like that. I don't know. The living thought, statue was back. I didn't think that anybody in the town had nefarious intent. That's, I'm just saying, like, maybe there was a monster or something. Okay. Not like, not like, you, yeah, you didn't think that not people were evil, you just thought maybe there was an evil presence. Yeah, but I, like I mean. A, like a 
Pennywise a clown? Honestly, I only ever thought about that in retrospect. When I was a kid, you don't think about that. I thought about that when I was a kid in small Minnesota towns, because they all feel that way, too. But also, I watched a lot of horror movies when I was a kid. Oh. Well, I guess so I was... So I always, always had that thought. I was always very trusting as a child, so... Back to Pet Cemetery when, uh, when Gage gets hit by the semi. I was afraid of, like, semis. When I was a kid, because I watched that when I was good. a kid. That's a good lesson. I know it's to a learn good thing. But if I was like anywhere near a street and a semi was going down, and I was, I was like, I'm gonna die from this, and I would just run. I was southern back then, I guess. Uh, you were huh? <laughs> <laughs> northern Minnesota. Oh, no. Yeehaw! The semis are coming. <laughs> Commence the jiggling. Right. Commence the jiggling. <laughs> All right, now we're cooking. All right. So, how long you live there? Nashua. Uh, so I said from one to three was Arizona. Was Arizona. So I guess from three to twelve, something like that. That ain't a bad. That ain't a bad kick. Yeah, and then I moved to. So Minneapolis that's like some. That. that sounds right. Yeah. That's some years there. Yeah, all the way up to twelve. That so that's all junior high or not junior high. That's all uh, elementary. That's all. Oh no, I can't be right. Cause I went to eighth grade in. St. Paul, so that doesn't make sense. That's not elementary. So I wouldn't have been 12 then. <laughs> I forgot the grade system. Uh, no, I, I, I guess it was only like five years or something like okay. that in New Hampshire. But it was still a, a nice chunk of childhood. Yeah. He had friends there? Yeah, I had a, one. my neighbor was probably my best friend. Her name was Lillian. Lillian? Mm-hmm. Love that name. I have an ex-girlfriend who had a kid named Lillian, so I can't name a kid named Lillian now. Oh. How sad for you. I know, dude. It ruined that name because I love that name. Uh, you that just, kid was pretty cool, too. If you just cut contact with her, then you... Oh, you like the kid, though. Yeah, the kid was cool. I don't... I, I haven't, I haven't like, talked to the kid. It's not like the kid... Like, I, I, I was part of the kid's life between the age of one and two. Uh-oh. Like, okay. you're not gonna, like, hey, Mark, good. <laughs> like, nothing. I'm not existing. What's up, Mark? I, she can literally lie to the child and be like, no, that was your dad that whole time. That wasn't another person. And she'd believe it. Like, you know, they're two. <laughs> like, oh, dad looked different for that year. Yeah. She don't know. Why would she... <laughs> Is the dad with them now? No, I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know. I haven't talked to her. What was the point of like lying? Lillian's about that a one cool year, name. <laughs> is all I'm getting at. All right. So it was a cool name. She was a cool. She was a cool gal. Would you guys well, like what, what, paint a picture of like a watching cartoons, playing action figures, like things like that? Yeah. Or like more playing outside type stuff. Oh uh, yeah. When I was kid, a kid, I loved playing outside, and uh, Nashua had really nice summers. So oh yeah, we did that a lot. Road bikes, that kind of thing. Yeah, me too. Uh, get get into like um uh like Super Nintendo and uh, um, that or not really. I don't think I really had any video game systems or anybody or knew anybody with them. Oh wow. When I was a kid. That's rough, dude. That's not that bad. I mean, I like. I'm glad that I didn't. I instead of those memories of like staring at a screen, I was. You know, uh, right. It's not at just it. staring at a scream. It scream a screen. It's okay. playing. Right. No, it's no. Triggered I got. I got. I'm not triggered. No, what I'm saying is, I have great <laughs> memories of beating Donkey Kong Country and Super Mario World. Those are things you can't take from somebody. Well, to be fair, I it was so cool. I probably those. like uh, replaced the time spent playing video games with just watching cartoons. Okay. Filling cool. my head with that. What was your favorite cartoon? Have you ever seen this movie called The Black Cauldron? Yeah, uh, it was a Disney movie. Even. Yeah, it was. And it, no real... one ever. I watched it in college, and I was like, "This is a thing." It's a weird. The whole thing. It's, it's a weird a one. Weird movie. It's like Secrets of Nim. Weird. Yeah, Nim no, was weird too. I think it'd be better if I had watched Secrets of Nim and been had that be my favorite cartoon. Because thinking yeah. back and looking at some of those Cauldrons. scenes, I was just thinking, well, this same is... with uh, Brave Little Toaster. I watched all the time when I was oh, a kid, I, and yeah, I went back to yeah. that, and I was like. This is rough. Like, there's a dude who has a, like, an embolism. The 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 uh, the air conditioner, like, gets so stressed he just dies. Yeah. Like, whoa! But and then he's just a dead body stuck in a wall. That's what. Like, there's some that's weird what, stuff going on. That's what that happens movie. to you know appliances, though. That's the whole point of the movie. I know, and it's it's a lot for a kid to just be like. 
death. That, that movie's all about dealing with loss and death. Yeah. It's a lot for a kid. Yeah, but that's the most appropriate way I can think of to like introduce a child to the aspects of loss and death. I don't know, because now I was afraid of an air conditioner for like a year. Okay, you were afraid of an air conditioner versus like, all right, I don't know, you going to your grandma's out. funeral and not knowing, you know, what, uh, yeah, what, where the, like, the deal is. Oh, yeah. Well, grandma, grandma? grandma's like the air conditioner. <laughs> or like, yeah, or like the cars in the, you know, dump. It's a good <laughs> transaction. It's horrible. <laughs> All right, okay. So, um, uh, hung out, you were hanging out with Lily and watch a black uh, cauldron. Are you friends with her on Facebook now? How weird uh, are those? I have not talked to Lillian since I left uh, Nashua. She's I'm got, terrible at She's keep... got a picture of you somewhere. She's Probably like, not. Spencer. No, no, I'm terrible at keeping meeting up with friends, but to my, in my defense, nobody's ever kept up with me. So I keep up with you. Yeah, you. We live in the same town. It's different. If I moved away, I probably wouldn't like yeah, keep, no. keep in touch. You're right. Like I got friends. Like when I went when I went to school in Seattle, I got friends constantly. Where it's like, dude, I used to hang out with you every day. You got married or something? Weird. It's pretty, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sad. But all right, I mean, I'm doing it. I'm grabbing how, that hair. That's how people's uh, hair oh, of the hound. Hair of the hound. A Coors Light. Yeah, that's gonna kick. That's gonna do it. It's <laughs> the cure all. Cure Light. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. We're doing a whole other one of these later, too. This is going to be a good day. you got to label this, like, not safe for children or something. Oh, they should know. If you're going to post... <laughs> if you're going to, like... If you're going to tag me or something and post it on my wall, I'm okay with that. But you got to tell people, like, we were, I'm not going to say. To I'm this. not going to say who, but I already had at least one person where it's like, hey, you're going to share that? He's like, I don't really want my mom to hear it. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> Dude, I'm actually kind of in the same boat. Maybe I shouldn't post this on my Oh, own. come on. I'll share it with, like, my, you know, deadbeat gross friends. Yeah, that's their target audience, you jerk. <laughs> <laughs> share it with, you know, people like you. You know, like the lower of society. I mean, I don't really want to advertise too much that I did a podcast interview just because, you know, I haven't done anything. The interview is, like, so the point of it is, like, I'm... A loser. We haven't got there yet. <laughs> we haven't got to the point of the interview yet. Okay. And you're okay. an artist. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's what you're sitting here for because I'm gonna get to that. You got to build up, and then we're gonna get to your creative process. <laughs> this is where for. my life landed me. <laughs> Dude, I live here. <laughs> All right. Uh, guess who doesn't get a beer now? Screw you. Okay. Uh, I, I prefer the Gatorade. I think. Yeah. Thank you for that. I uh, remember I got a longer day. So, um. Anyways, uh, so. Where'd you get this? So then you moved straight to Minneapolis? After mm. New Hampshire? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, my dad got another, uh, the call to move offices again. But this time it was in his hometown, so he wanted to go back. Was Minneapolis his hometown? St. Paul. Okay, so he's a, he's a, uh, a Minnesota boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was born and raised there. His uh, mom raised him and his three sisters. All wow. three of his, his sisters live in Minneapolis, St. Paul oh, still. Cool. So he and wanted you're to be like nice close to them. to them now? Yeah, or I'm like I mean I'm closer to them than I am with like my old friends and stuff. Well, <laughs> my, fam- I, my family, I know, Probably I know them by name and everything. Poor, poor Lillian. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she. I don't think she's too far. No, honestly. I'm just picturing she's like the dog of Futurama. <laughs> she just waiting outside your house, getting old, waiting for you to return. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's like the saddest episode of Futurama the Good Lord channel right now. I don't even remember that episode. Until what? You it up. That episode makes me cry. Seymour was the name of the dog, right? Yeah, I have to look at our <laughs> our uh, uh, thing. our thing in the corner. Our producer. No talking. <laughs> He's been laughing the whole time. I know. I, he he is like our laugh track. Like producer slash laugh track. <laughs> Yeah, nothing's funny though. This has just been sad. You should uh, also do sound effects and stuff like we've thought <laughs> about it. <laughs> by we, I mean I've thought about it of just like whenever somebody says something and like that isn't. It's like, well, you know, then I went and got my uh, my whatever degree. I just want like to play the Christian bell. Like, oh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> just ruin the inner. <laughs> like, they, like seriously. <laughs> Just like stare at you and be like, that was like, a and real just hit it three more times until they leave. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good for you! Good, 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 good for you! <laughs> oh God! Uh, <laughs> just make your art podcast. Did, just did awful. you go to? <laughs> you didn't go to Corcon with us this year, did you? No, I didn't. All right, the funniest thing I saw the whole time we were uh, might have been under the influence of uh, of some alcohol. 
Probably. Yeah. I mean, we drank for about 14 told hours. Me, so you yes. told me the story of you and Jake just getting oh, yeah. trashed. Uh, so anyway, so we're all pretty messed up, and we're sitting in this big room where they're playing, uh, uh, not Smash Brothers, uh, Mario Party, and we're, we're cheering for somebody playing it. So there's like four people up on stage, and the TV's behind them, and they've got their own little, and then they're playing it. Did they dress up as the characters? No, but uh, the the person who was, we were Waluigi, so we were cheering, <laughs> Waluigi! <laughs> and the person who was cheering for Boo, the team that was cheering for Boo, they kept winning. Like, Boo kept winning all the minigames. Yeah. And it was like, oh my god, so we were all just screaming at Team Boo. <laughs> We're like, boo, you suck, boo. We're just yelling at him. We're like a foot away. You know, we're just sitting in these chairs. And then after it dies down, somebody from one of the other teams just goes, way to go, assholes. <laughs> and I don't know why, but it just totally nailed me. I just like fell over laughing so hard. Because he had like this nerdy ass voice and he just so deadpan. Way to go, assholes. Like just nailed it. Oh, I just have to share a funny thing. So it was like. Oh, I'm crying thinking about it. I was wondering what their relation was. <laughs> yeah, because... Oh, good for you. Is what oh, good for you. <laughs> Way to go, assholes. <laughs> all right. All right. So <laughs> what you, you, what'd you do in Minneapolis? <laughs> lived? What did I do? Yeah, yeah, you lived there for a while? Oh, yeah. I, well, so we moved back right when I was about to start eighth grade. And I was born in October, so I'm like a little older than yeah. all the kids in grades. So, uh... I went to a private uh, Lutheran school, actually. Nice. How was that? It was really good. It was a better than like a private Catholic school. With yeah, the with I, the would, rulers. I mean, I would assume I've never been to one of those. That's just whenever I think of like, oh, it's a Catholic school. I just go right to the Blues Brothers, like chick with the yardstick beating the crap out of that. Oh yeah. I think about. Um, my dad actually went to Catholic schools too, and uh, he found out uh, after a couple decades or something uh, that one of his teachers was actually a pedophile. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. never. He never. Damn met, Boston Globe. He never ruining with, our childhood. He, he never messed with my dad, which is lucky, but... Uh, that is very he, lucky. He That's definitely good. did stuff with other kids. But seeing that it was, like, that you were that close to it is just so terrifying. It just is. Like, I, I thought it was terrifying. And, well, you know, when he told me about it, he was kind of, like... Yeah, I don't know. He kind of, like, got quiet afterwards. Oh, <laughs> I was man. like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, like, literally the roll of the dice... Like, you could have had your life ruined. <laughs> probably, Jeez. yeah, that's what, kind of what it does. That's kind of why pedophiles should probably be shot on sight, yeah. in my opinion. There you go, buddy. Just like... <laughs> Moving like... on from this, but that's pretty good. Let's just oh, get... good for you. Let's just go out and hunt pedophiles. All right, clean cup. Moving up. <laughs> all right, uh, so you went uh, all, all the way through high school there? Yeah, um... Through high school, I, uh, well, so St. Peter's Lutheran was my grade school. That mm-hmm. was up until, um, wait a minute. Grade school. I'm, I'm, I'm missing some, some chunks here. Sorry. Whew. So I was actually in St. Peter's from second grade uh-huh. to eighth grade. That's oh. what I meant to say. And that's in, that was in New Hampshire then? No, that was in, that was in St. Paul. You moved to St. Paul in second grade? Yeah, so how old are you in second grade? That's what I meant to say. Seven. I thought you were like in You're eighth grade seven. when you moved up. Okay, so, okay, so, I was, I was oh, in Joshua for God. at least five years. Damn. I know that. See, I'm terrible at timelines. I don't know, yeah. I don't know why I didn't, like, prepare more. Uh, dude, we got, you wasted last night. It was a very bad idea in my part. I mean, even if I was at full capacity. I'm terrible at remembering my life, honestly. Oh, okay. But I can remember the schools and the names and the people, so I guess that's good <laughs> Not good yeah. enough. Um, all right, so... You, high school. You let's move to up to high school, because I, I, got I got a question. So okay. when did you... When did art... When did you start getting drawn to art? I always liked art. I mean, I, I did art. My, my favorite class in all these schools was art, and I was lucky because these were well-funded, you know, private schools. Yeah, yeah so they had, like, real artists... Um, yeah, they didn't have real artists. I mean, well, they, like, just, they just had a real stuff. art class. Yeah, yeah I know, but I'm just materials. saying, like the art teachers we had was like the gym teacher. Yeah, like you know, it was like here who doesn't paint this? Who doesn't care about art? Yeah, it's not somebody <laughs> who like in the, and every once in a while they bring in this person who like went to like all the elementary schools who'd come in who's actually like knew and understood art, but that was about it. But mm. for the most part, it was like yeah, whatever paint this construction paper and then staple it to the whatever like yeah. it wasn't that, I mean sad I don't want 
I'm glad that I didn't go to public school. Yeah, well, uh, we did. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually, I'm not, I'm not heartbroken over it. I, I public school bad. education. At least I have my... something to blame. Like yeah. when when I can't do math, it's like how it's public school. <laughs> school system. <laughs> I mean, I still can't. I, I mean, my favorite subject in school was math and art, and I'm still pretty bogus at math. I mean, I can do basic math just because I'm a server, but. Yeah, you have to be able to do that. I, even as a server, I couldn't do it all, all summer. I kept my phone on and being calculated. Do uh, com- do computer programmers need, like... What? You said math and art. It doesn't even fucking make sense. Yeah, I like I liked both subjects. Uh, uh, let me do the interview. <laughs> Alright, ready? He makes that doesn't, good, even, that he, doesn't even make sense. He makes a good point. <laughs> Got ya! <laughs> no, I did, I did like both subjects. That's not a lie. Those were my favorite yeah, subjects. Yeah, that is a weird... Subject. I was good at both of them, so I just made it my isn't that favorites. different sides of the brain? Right. Both sides did those things well, I guess. Yeah. There you go. Uh. Nice. <laughs> that was barely even a burp. It was like a groan burp. <laughs> That's kind of how my burps go. I'm just like. Ugh. I've been trying to talk through them like Rick Sanchez, and I get a good burp. I like to like just make just say a sentence. If you do that too much, you're gonna end up throwing up accidentally. <laughs> and then I'll add the green slime down like Rick Sanchez has. Except it would be in my 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 puke beard. Yeah, and Deep nobody would weird. want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> you gotta, like, you gotta, oh, yeah, that's that guy that vomits when he <laughs> like, talks about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, that's God. the guy who vomited in the middle of my podcast, that interview. I just uh, didn't appreciate it. <laughs> all right, this is the best podcast. It's really bad. <laughs> See, instead of, instead of saying... This is horrible. This is going bad. I'll just tell go. Woo, just this is some, great. Just like this sarcast- is amazing. Sarcastically, <laughs> just like wow, this is great. This is going oh, awesome. This is good. This is the best Nobel Peace Prize winning podcast right here, buddy. <laughs> Technically, is it a podcast if only five people listen to it? Yes. And one of them's me. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them might be you. Do you ever re-listen? Even Danny? if nobody listens to it, I mean, you could you could be the only person in the world, and you could still make a podcast if the internet is. You know, still That's what Alex Jones is going to be doing soon. <laughs> he's getting deplatformed. All right. Anyways. You think that he's going to be the last man in the world? No, but he's he's going to be the only one listening to his podcast. Is oh, what I'm saying. I see. Is eventually he's going to be like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then he's just going to like record it on a VHS and just throw it in his living room. Like, there you go, it's out. <laughs> <laughs> like that, like that show Better Call Saul, where he's living alone, like, uh, like you know, hiding from people. Oh yeah. And he just watches old VHS tapes of his old ads. Pretty much. It's the saddest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Was that his, isn't that his brother who's doing that? What? No. No, I thought his brother was messed up. Or... His brother was messed up, but okay. you know, that was... I only watched story. a little bit of Better Call Saul. I thought it was really good first season, second season. Was About good. halfway through season one is what I watched. And I didn't get burnt out. I just like, I missed a couple episodes and then I was going to go back and then there was like too many and it was overwhelming. And yeah. I liked it. It was a good show. I breathe that burp out. That was just right at very me. polite Thank of you. me. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Right. You were in my... <laughs> just give that to you. All right, so um, uh, art in high school, how did that go? Really good. I uh, made one of my best pieces in high school, I think. It Me was, too. This it was, was great. It was a portrait of Chuck Palahniuk using acrylic and spray paint. And, Sounds uh, awesome, actually. Just red and white spray paint. Red how big was it? Um, about uh, 16 by 16, actually. Oh, it was nice. A square portrait. You know where it is? It's in my parents' house, hanging up. They That's cool. It. Yeah, they do they know who Chuck is? Uh, I think they they have a general idea. I used to read their book, his books all the time. Okay, but they know he's an author. They never read any of his books, right? Because if they read like Guts, that thing is going to be taken down. <laughs> I don't think that I don't think that they read any of his material. I think they're more. My dad likes shipping novels, and my mom likes shipping novels. Yeah, you know, old ships. You know, sailors. Like like. Like, uh, um, Moby Dick. Like, well, no, I was gonna say, like, a uh, Master and Commander, those whole series. Basically, yeah. Okay. I mean, I think that he Sweet. read that in high school, and now he's on to, like, the even more boring shit. Oh, wow. <sighs> then the man ran to the bow. Da 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 da. I don't really great. know what my mom reads, actually. She reads all sorts of stuff. And you read Chuck growing up, though. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, I love, I love Chuck. Uh, I'm not, I'm not very good at reading. 
just a very slow reader. Probably because I'm blind in one eye. So, so I'm a very slow reader. Oh, okay. So that's why I gravitated towards comics because they're an easier read and also because I like visual art. So there's art. But Chuck was the one guy who his novels, a lot of them, were only 200, 300 pages. So you could actually rock through He's, them. It's not a hard read either. No. The way, he, read, he, the he, way he writes. His is... writing style's messed up, but it's not like he uses big, huge words. And, you know, he's he not. He kind of uses run on sentences almost. Yeah. Well, he, yeah. A lot of them are stream. You're reading somebody's consciousness. A lot of it's first mm-hmm. person. So it's. A lot of it makes sense through you know uh through their brain but not on paper it's kind of like he breaks a lot of grammatical rules which is awesome yeah like brain speak basically Mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. it doesn't translate well as does a lot of repeating like for the english you know the rules of the english language yeah it doesn't doesn't work work. there but when you when you read it you it and you think what the yeah and then you're literally getting his thoughts and you're going through it and i i love his his, uh the power of repetition he uses Mm -hmm. is so good of when it's like in Choke, which is my favorite one, uh, he ke- he keeps saying, what would Jesus not do? And then it ends up like literally being almost every other paragraph began with like, what would Jesus not do? And it's like, yeah. blah, 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 what would Jesus not do? And yeah. it just gets, of, of it, you literally having a loop in your brain, which <laughs> does, we actually get and he, he does writes that. It's kind of have an brilliant. obvious way of just like, throwing a theme down and nailing it into you yeah that's, just that's the nails it into you like what? oh by the way i'm the second coming of jesus and i'm horrible welcome <laughs> to choke <laughs> that's what that book is about yeah that's one of the ones i've never read actually. he thinks he's the second coming of jesus oh he, he finds out about halfway through the book that uh that he doesn't have a dad and then his mom who's crazy tells him that uh that uh the foreskin of uh jesus christ which is like Something that was written in a book of, uh, you know how um, pieces of saints were relics and they were kept in old churches. This is a thing. So yeah, like, yeah. Well, I have the finger like of a Catholic an tradition. apostle or yeah, whatever. Exactly. So apparently, the foreskin of Jesus was kept somewhere, and uh, through he thinks that uh, the, she was working at a lab where they took DNA and cloned a Jesus, and then he's the clone. And then she smuggled him out. So Spoilers, his... that's not a thing. Yeah. But that's what he thinks about halfway through the novel. So he starts saving people in backwards ways. So he believes that his mom is a genius that can clone mm-hmm. like thousands. She's just a crazy chick who worked there and stole the baby. Stole the baby. Yeah, him. But she stole him. Oh, I see. Yeah. She she didn't even she just she said she didn't even give birth to him. Mm-hmm. She just stole. A that's what she's claiming, baby. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I don't think any of that's true. It, it's pretty ambiguous, but you're pretty sure he's not the second coming of Christ. <laughs> Just, but uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so he does like these, uh, like instead of actual saving people and performing real mi- miracles, he would fake choke, or not, well, real choke, but you know, he'd do it on purpose. So he'd shove like an entire steak in his mouth and get it lodged in his windpipe oh. and then try to get himself to the most rich looking person and then get them to save him. Mm-hmm. And then when they saved him, he'd give them this big sob story, which was actually true. Like, hey, I'm pretty much homeless right now. I don't have any money. My mom has cancer, and I'm trying to do that. And I had to drop out of college. So for saving his life, they now feel responsible for him. So they would start sending him gifts and money, and they would try to support him. So he would do this, like, every day. But not only for the support, he thinks that he's giving their life meaning, like Jesus. That's probably the most fucked up chuck Palahniuk yeah book i've ever heard of i love it choke <laughs> is great and then another thing is he would go to like the crazy old folks home his mom was at uh and there was like girls who would be like you're my uncle and you did this to me when i was a kid and you know because they were like really They're old dimension. and delusion yeah. dimension uh, dimension? They Dementia. live in another go. dimension. Yeah, yeah they're, they're interdimensional grandmas <laughs> uh but you know yeah so then he finally about halfway through the book uh, he goes, uh, he's like, yeah, I was. And you know what? I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry I did that to you as a kid. And they're like, well, that's all you had to say. And like, <laughs> like saves them. Oh. So then that was his other way of saving people. Is he'd give them meaning from having them save him from choking. And then he would like take responsibility for molestations of old ladies. <laughs> like, yeah, by the way, the book's amazing. I don't own it right now. I don't now. even need I, to read uh, it now. You just no, no, I did paper. not give you a lot of it. <laughs> and also, it's his writing style. You can learn what a what a Chuck book is, but it's not going to do anything unless you actually read it. Yeah. Because well, it's his amazing writing style. 
in high school, I, I read like uh, Haunted and Fight Club and Rant. Yeah, Rant. Rant's I I, more messed up. I think. I think I reread all those. Yeah, I think it is messed up, but it's also. You know, I love that writing style. Very, it's like uh, interviews. I really like the in-depth time travel kind of, you know, just. It's kind of a subplot almost. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even you know make sense. I forget it honestly when somebody's like, "Well, you know, I mean, it, it, it's like about like time travel and this and that." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, it is." Fuck. It. Like I literally forget that because for me it's about that dude's like crazy culture is what I like yeah. to take on that. Like that the whole party like crashers. Made, yeah. yeah. Like, do oh. you not like that he did that? Do you not like that he introduced like? Semi sci fi into his novel. No, no, no. I like it. I'm just saying it, it didn't seem like a. The, it didn't seem that important to the it, story. It's also kind of a breakaway from what Chuck does. He doesn't break away from reality, really. He's. Well, a, Damned all takes place in hell. Oh, well, I never read Damned. Yeah. I read the first couple bits of it. I mean, uh, the, it's, it's pretty much like a breakfast club in hell. The book Haunted, the point of it is that they, they believe that they're, like, in a. Oh, they, at some point, all the characters believe they're like in a haunted place with mm-hmm. spirits and stuff. But the like, what the whole point of the book is, is that the only thing that's haunting them is their memories, which is kind of cliche. Yeah, you. Understand but yeah, more so it's a group of short sense. stories written by people who read a writer's retreat, right? Was yes. haunted. Writer's retreat in an old, busted up mansion. Yeah, basically. which is that's awesome. Just, that's just like. And, the, and there isn't really a narrative story. It's all their short stories, and it slowly gets more and more messed up because they're in this supposedly haunted mansion. Starving to death. Because Starving, yeah, they're not being fed. My favorite, no, <laughs> my favorite part of that book is the fact that they basically kill themselves because they all just, like, they all want to be, like, famous or something. So they go into the storage, you know, facility with the dried food bags, yeah. and they poke little holes in the types of food that they don't like. And since they all do this... Like, eventually they just, like, get rid of all the food. They ruin all the food <laughs> because everybody doesn't like something. Oh. So they just fuck the whole, like, the whole food storage facility is empty now. And they have to resort, basically, to... I gotta reread food. Haunted. All right, uh, I'm glad we had our little Chuck Palahniuk excursion. Yeah, that so was a good point, little... Cut, point being, I liked it in high school. But yeah, in so. and, and, and that, that, a lot of teenagers, especially me, but a lot of people gravitated towards Chuck in high school because it's such... He, he grabs that angst and anger that we are feeling or whatever yeah. at that time. Um, but anyways, and I, I was like a Chuck. super angry teenager. Too. I, I was a punk. I broke stuff a lot. Mm. I just like would smash my head against desks and stuff yeah, because I, did I was that. so pissed. Really? Because yeah. I actually did that. It sounds like you're saying it sarcastically. No, I did that oh, all the time. Oh, 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 I was like, <laughs> hey, I feel like you're mocking me right <laughs> no, now. No, <laughs> I did that. I did that. <laughs> uh, Kitten did is it. not impressed. I did it on the lockers and the desks all the time, and yeah. teachers would like like send me home and tell my parents, and my parents would be like, "You gotta stop doing that, please." And I would feel bad and be like, "Okay, <laughs> oh, I don't really have any reason to be angry." I would punch people in the faces for like the most tiniest, like like somebody bumped me, and they're like, "Sorry, I'm like sorry, this." <laughs> I, I would do that all you just the time. Sounded like an asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely was. I was, I was, an was asshole a really too, bad I person. I, um, not, I, I had mean, a friend who we. Bla- we globbed on each other and fed off each other's violence, and we became, we were very violent people. We were just beating on each other and everybody else always. And now that he's not part of my life anymore, and I, it was a very good thing because I'm like, why do I hit people in the face all the time? So now, <laughs> so now I only it's hit my producer. Thing. I'm kidding. Love you. Yeah, I didn't. Uh... <laughs> so Art was huh? it him? <laughs> was it Danny? <laughs> no. Okay. No. Danny's. <laughs> Man, he's still not my friend. <laughs> he's just a business associate. Oh, this we, is a we don't make money, so it's not business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> neither do I. <sighs> oh, I guess that makes sense, right? This is a podcast. Yeah, it's a podcast. <laughs> no ad. No hey, ads. Hey, somebody who wants ads, you know, like give us money for it. And we'll add it. Well, I have no shame. I'll t- I'll talk Radio about. Radio Free Frogger was underwritten by. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that right now. Do that when I was at Radio Free Frogger. and Gerberts. I didn't get paid there either. Because they're cold cut sandwiches. Really pack a stink. <laughs> Now we get served. <laughs> Pack a stink. That's not a good advert. See, so now, so now Jimmy John's gives us money. <laughs> Their cold cuts really pack a stink. <laughs> That's a you bad. don't want this girth. Dude, uh, is that a thing where like uh, like Burger King could just make like a really crappy McDonald's ad? Coke actually, um, Pepsi actually did that. Way back in the day, like 
drink Pepsi, it will kill you. What they did was they had, like, <laughs> no, what they did was they had, like, old guys go and purchase the opposite product and, like, drink it in front of, you know, young people. And it would make <laughs> it look so uncool that they want to drink the opposite product. And it worked. <laughs> They did this for years. They had like old guys go to grocery stores and gas stations. That and is just such guerrilla marketing. Pick I love up, it. pick up a nice twenty-four ounce Coke and just drink it and just feel like, oh, it's so good. But they're like fat and bald, so the kids are like, oh, <laughs> get the fuck away. <laughs> get a drink. Let's Coke. get some pe- Pepsi's. <laughs> yeah, Let's get some Pepsi's. <laughs> I do notice that younger people do drink Pepsi's still. So it's like, I think it's. Still, a, I, mean, I don't think they still do it, but it's still See, hitting our zeitgeist. Pepsi should have kept that it. ad campaign because this whole Kendall Jenner commercial business just makes them look like losers. Yeah. Did you see that commercial? No. Okay, so she's in a basically a march uh, of like pe- protesters, but they're not protesting anything in general. It's like just like it's Martin. like Black Lives Matter meets LGBTQ meets yeah, like, like everything. We're just, humans. We're all mad. We're all humans, and let's treat each other nice. Like there's a guy just holding a a sign that has the Pepsi colors, which are the colors of America, that says, join the conversation hashtag. And it's just stupid. And then Kendall Jenner... Makes like, me want Pepsi, though. Kendall Jenner's, like, modeling in front of this whole protest, and then she's like, wait, I can't be modeling right now. I need to join the conversation. Cracked actually made a really funny video just making fun okay. of the whole commercial. You should that's watch awesome. it. That's, yeah, my, that's my two cents on that. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I, I fell off on Cracked when they fired all my favorite people. This one commercial kind of redeems that. Honestly. Okay. A little that's bit. Good. I think. Well, I saw that they were doing people watching again, so that's cool. I haven't watched any of it. I think that that series is kind of lame. Contrived. Yeah. Just a little Very. bit contrived. Yeah, pretty much. I don't really uh, like I it. I got it. It's my ear. Oh my God. It's, Go for it. It's pretty gross. All right. Uh, <laughs> so, our, is it? Um, well, he's got time, right? Are you yeah, watching timers? I'm good. We'll get our 30 minute countdown. Once okay. Oh, I see. We got, um, we're on a timer. Yeah, he's, he's watching it. We're doing an uh, hour and a half. I've told you that. <laughs> We've just been talking about like pop culture yeah. and stuff. What's up? <laughs> so uh, eventually, people are going to be like, Mark, every podcast is the same. You just have somebody else you bounce your bullshit off of. And it's like, yeah, probably. Mark, you know, it would be really funny if this you This podcast is about the people, not me. You get like. <laughs> Okay, you get Modern Man in here. I tried! No, you get him in here at one point. I've been and trying then, so hard. And then you like say, okay, we got Modern Man, I'm really excited. And then you like ask him the first question, and he starts answering, and then you interject, and I you just like tell him your life story, basically. You just, you don't interview him. You just I, interview yourself. I actually, and he doesn't say two words. That's There's the so whole funny. fucking thing. No, you know what I want to do is, I was hoping to bring Safely back, but to interview me. <laughs> because Safely and me just have such a great back and forth, especially when the radio is involved and he's such a hilarious guy. So I bet no the one with Luke Safely has a lot of views because he's got a lot of friends. Yeah, it, I think it has the most. And also, it is my favorite one. No offense. I don't... This why one would I be a, a, well, This one's not even over yet. Yeah. Why would I be offended? It's all downhill from here, though. <laughs> <laughs> just ask me... Tell about me about art! Okay. All right, medians. So, how do you decide that you're an acrylic painter? Um, I didn't really. I mean, I I only painted acrylic and watercolors in high school because that's what was available. They yeah. didn't use oils, you know, as a, mm-hmm. you know, as, they didn't give that to kids, yeah. basically. Because yeah. um, of multiple reasons. They did have sculpture. They did have, you know, uh, uh, what else did they use in high school? I don't know. Just, you know, clay sculpture. And yeah. I did all this stuff. I, I like doing everything. And I do color pencils first and then sometimes i had to add paint and they did like um i don't know if they ever did this with you but they did like kind of science meets art and they'd show you like chemical reactions and how it looked and you'd like try to play with that oh yeah cool and you'd like yeah, use a crayon to like contain pools of salt water yeah and mix colors in there that's cool like, that kind of thing but uh i guess i enjoyed acrylic the most because it required almost the most patience with oils i kind of noticed that i could just keep painting just keep going going mm-hmm. going and it takes them like forever to dry i know that was why i'm out of oils but, because i but, liked my my i, I want to do multiple multiple layers well and the thing about that is other. when they're almost dry that's when they're the most like malleable in my yeah. opinion so i enjoy doing that i like enjoy like letting them dry for a little bit 
and then just painting over in another section, then going in with a different color over the oil paints mm. and just kind of slightly mixing. It makes a really good gradient, I think. Mm. So I did that a lot in college when I yeah. was an art okay. major. Okay, so you, where did you go to college? NDSU. Okay, and that's why you moved to this area? Yeah. Okay. I, did what, did you, you look at a bunch of different colleges? No, not really, actually. In the retrospect, that seems kind of dumb, but, I mean, NDSU was cheap. My cousin was going here. We were really good friends, and they okay. wanted me to keep an eye on him, kind of, I think. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and they were like, hey, make sure he does his homework and stuff. I'm like, he's not going to listen to me. And, and, you're, and you're, like, me bringing into this situation where that's just a bigger chance we're not going to do our homework. Yeah, we messed around all the time. It was a really dumb idea. But I enjoyed college nonetheless. I graduated, so it worked out. That's good. It was art, so it wasn't that hard. Oh, uh, and you just got a BFA then? Hmm? You got a BFA then? Yeah. BFA Bachelor, and Bachelor of Fine Arts? Yeah, and I think it was general art, but I I guess you could say that I graduated with painting. You know, yeah. Because I don't really do anything else right now. I yeah, just, you serve and paint. I just serve and paint. Because painting is the easiest thing to get materials for, I think. Um, yeah. I could sculpt, I guess, but I don't know. I feel like I don't have the uh, uh, tension span to do that anymore. I, like, tried, and also I'm not that great at it either. Uh, I'm, not, be told. I'm not super great at sculpture. I'm not super great at painting either, so <laughs> well, I, I don't really think greater skill has a lot to do with it, period. That's right. We had this whole argument about, like... It wasn't an argument. Well, well no, it was a discussion argued? slash argument. We had an, a discussion, okay, about... How um, there is no such thing as bad art or yeah. good art. No, 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 no. I was saying there's there's no such thing as not art. I say there's such thing as good and bad. I, I agree. But, but, but no, but I agree when, with the first part then. Yeah. I agree there's no such thing as not, not art. Not art. Yeah, yeah. I know we agree on that. I mean, look at our art, clearly. Uh, but, but yeah, but, you know, uh, that was half of art school for me was people trying to tell me that something wasn't art. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it was, it's a... Uh, it, it offends me too much. It's not art or, or it's, it's, you know, you didn't put enough skill into it. It's not art or this and that. And I, I was can like, see how that get, you know, and it, it was very uh, counterintuitive. Yeah. And then people would tell me like, Oh, when I started painting expressionism because I didn't master realism, which not every person does no, that nobody, I couldn't, they said, Mark, basically you can't, nobody does. That. He said, you can't break through these people would say, I couldn't break the rules until I learned them. Mm. And then I asked my teacher that, who I really respect, named Michael Otterson. I wish I could get a hold of him, but he doesn't have a Facebook or anything. Uh, and I was like, what do you think of that? Can I break the rules before I learn them? He goes, yeah, break them. Those people are dumb. Like, <laughs> you're, they're wrong. I, th I think those people were thinking, you know, you need to put the work in. But you can put the, you can c concentrate the work in other areas. Well, yeah, is I'm not trying to be a realist painter. I'm trying to be an expressionist, and it's going to take a lot of time to figure that out even mm -hmm. and in yeah I, mean, I think uh, the initial people who actually broke the rules to create expressionism already broke the ground for you so you yeah. probably don't need to learn the rules Do, to break yeah them. and then what also what's the what's the level that i have to be a master of realism before i can move on do i have to be the greatest realist painter of all time before i can start painting outside the lines or like do i have to figure out linear perspective because i have or just draw, <laughs> draw a really good kitty cat face in most people. Hey, look, I made a kitty cat face. Can I move on, please? <laughs> the, look, you can see the whiskers. It's real. Yeah. It's a real cat. And what that comes down to is painting with it or ego, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Is half of or all of art school is ego. Is, 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 I don't see a lot of you just splashing your, you know, if, I, if my face was my subconscious, I'm slamming it into my paint and just mm -hmm. trying to get a feeling, an expression of anger or jealousy or hatred or even happiness or sadness or whatever. Um, but just like, oh, I'm going to paint this beautiful portrait of this girl standing next to a tree. Like, sure, you can get you can get the happiness and this and that, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to make it look like the tree and like the girl and like the whatever, that it just doesn't have the same of, of this raw emotion. Sounds like you went to school uh, with people that were basically the opposite with be of people that I went to school with. They were all designers. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So I went to school with art majors and they were they were like I mean, it's it's a it's like a world where anything's possible and nobody's really gonna mess with you that much. We had yeah. arguments, we had discussions, we had critiques, you know. Yeah, like, and I love critiques. Meetings. Which you know is that's one reason I love you being down in the studio is mm -hmm. because 
we can actually critique each other's work. But I don't think any time in my college career did anybody ever say, you can't do that. Oh, I heard you don't. You don't have the experience. You don't have the professionalism. You don't have the skill. That yeah. never happens. I mean, if you're in an, a painting class, they just say go nuts, and they say, "Hey, can you paint this maybe in this direction?" And I mean, not even like a specific subject very much. So it's just like a theme almost, and yeah. then they just let you loose. Nobody's ever gonna like say, um, you know, don't do that. It's, yeah, it's it, it's. I've never even like heard that. Even I used to like was in Renaissance Hall, uh, the NDSU building downtown. Yeah, yep. And uh, floor for floor, uh, we with uh, we kind of traded off with architecture students. Okay. So it was art, architecture, art, architecture, and we'd have to climb stairs and we'd kind of brush shoulders with architecture students. Cool. And they're kind of like designers a little bit. They're they're yeah. But they're they're so swallowed up in their own like really intense regimen of homework and mm -hmm. training that when they see stuff that I've made, they actually feel relief almost. And yeah. Like, this is wonderful. I want to do this sometimes. Well, that was another thing is uh, one of my best friends in college, he loved my art and he said it's because he couldn't create it. He was very realist and he could make something look very realistic. And then he would do cartoons too, but he would still follow classic cartoon styles and this and that. And mm -hmm. he goes... I can't just cut loose. Mm. Like, I have, to, like, like, That's you know, I was doing paintings heavy. back then where I wasn't really, there wasn't a lot of form or structure. It was mostly words and just playing with colors and shapes. What a bizarre, yeah. you know, state of mind to even try to put myself in. Because I can't, I can't think of myself doing things that are super realistic because I don't think that I have the skill. On the other hand, if I was... Also, I don't have the drive. If I was in... <laughs> yeah, that to. too. If I was in the position that he was in and he wanted to, like, stop, you mm -hmm. know, doing realistic stuff and just, uh, you know, just, like, slice a marker across a paper and, you know, just... Or just write a dirty just, word, cross just, it out, write a pretty word, just cross mess it out, it out and Just mess it. around with some <laughs> acrylic paint for a while and they can't do that? Mm -hmm. I don't I don't understand how that's even possible. I know. And that, that blew me away. And it was great because we were drawn to each other's work and we were very opposite. Is he was very technical and I was me. I was very, you know, watch this and I'm just gonna put paint on my hand and go, <clears throat> and that was it. <laughs> yeah, that was that's what it looks like. Or I was painting with tubes and I, when I stopped using brushes, that really opened up m me to my style of art. Is you know I haven't used a brush in a long time mm -hmm. and and that really, the second I did that at art school, people were pissed. They're like, why are you painting with your fingers? I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, well, what about brush technique? I'm like, what about finger technique? Leave me alone. Yeah. Like, like, it, who cares? So I'm not doing it your way. <laughs> but anyways, this it's, isn't about me. It's so weird that, uh... oh, it isn't? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's weird that designers would, you know, care. I don't know. Like, well, just, they had to be in the same classes, too. Well, you know, concentrate on your own stuff. That's, I mean, do your own deal. I mean, with art, it's not like... It's not like chasing serial killers, you know? There's no right way to do it. You, Is there a right way to chase serial killers? I mean, according to uh, that book, Red Dragon, there is. Oh, yeah. You kind of have to put yourself in their mindset and kind of screw with yourself a little bit. Yeah, that was a bad person to put yourself in the mindset of. I know. He cut out eyes and put in mirrors. That was weird. Yeah, he was, and he had to, and he had to do that so they could keep the general public safe. Not a real person, Danny. Imagine. Well, not. Well, imagine how, imagine how you'd have to, you know, do that, I guess I'm saying. But I'm saying, like, you, there's no right way to do art, my point yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, no, okay, you're Okay, maybe right. programming is a better, you know, yeah. way to put it. You know, there's well, a right also, way to program. Yeah, there's a right way to write. Yeah, I, that's why I, I went to school and learned how to write code, and I decided never to do it again. No, I did that too, actually. Yeah, because I, I know how to write websites, and I was like, never again. I had a very... A rudimentary beginner's course in college on how to like write script and yeah. they use this thing called alice in wonderland.exe to teach I it never use that. it was a it was a format teaching with we like just did after effects and uh really uh, crude Flash and html really crude 3d Dream you know works? creatures Dream that would like teach you you know like code writing basically oh, okay it was almost like children's storybook time kind of in college I kind of felt dumb doing it but every time <laughs> I learned a new thing I'd be like oh I'm actually kind of more fulfilled now but I never want to learn anything more complicated than this
so that was my experience with programming. But there's a right way to do it, is my point. There's yeah. a right way to do painting. It's like, that's the point of painting. It's also baking the cooking. Is is if I'm just like, you know, throwing a spaghetti, spaghetti sauce together, I don't have to measure my garlic, I'm just going to toss it in. Yeah. Gonna, I'll do parsley, and guess what? I'll, I'll try apples. Let's toss apples in it. Screw it. It's called culinary arts. Yeah. But then when it comes to baking, it's not like if I'm making a cake, I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to use double the flour. <laughs> you know? How about this? No sugar. When you're doing You know, that's like, not going to work out. When you're doing baking, though, you could say, you know what? Screw it. Pinch a cayenne. Let's see what happens. And maybe it t- turns out really good. You don't know. Yeah, but you can't. You, you can do that a little bit. You're right. Yeah. Just like you could tweak. You know, so there's a something. scale. There's a, there's a very there's big a, scale. There's a scale. But, of but I can creativity. literally be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cook this food on the flat top and not use butter at all. You know what? I'm and that's gonna, fine. I think I'm not gonna cook the chicken breasts. See what yeah. happens. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the the person who posted a picture of her chicken breasts? It got all over Facebook, and it was the a medium, the medium, medium rare, rare chicken breast. That's the way you eat it. Lit, lit, lit. Seared. It was just seared, and somebody's like, "You're gonna get salmon." And she goes, "It's not salmon. It's chicken." <laughs> That's fake. I've seen that before. It's not salmon. It's chicken. I've seen oh that. Oh my god. <laughs> Whatever. It's just the idea that, and then she's like, "It was so good." I'm like, no, it wasn't. Oh no, it wasn't. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. <laughs> ten hours later, it won't be good either because that's gonna skyrocket through you. Ten, ten hours, man. I think that maybe two hours is there. All right, max. two hours. All if right. she if either she doesn't way. wind up in the hospital, she's gonna have. How like, long does it usually take? I thought it was sixteen. When, when your stomach detects something that's bad, usually oh, it, it wants to expunge it. Yeah, or which it, I'm surprised it didn't do with my steak. Or it just puts you in the hospital. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I ate an 18 ounce steak with with Jake last night before we came out. So nobody oh. cares, dude. It was amazing. Shut the fuck up. I have steak. Are you I, just jealous of a huge ribeye? I have steak every night at my job, hey. and it's half off. <laughs> no, no talk, Danny. <laughs> no, I, I I like steak. <laughs> Sorry, I took a drink too long. That you had to, you had to survive on your own, and you came up with, "I like steak." <laughs> You're a really good interviewer. Has ever that? No, actually. <laughs> wonder how, wonder how far you'll go. Oh, this is about it. This is the, I'm peeking. This is me it's peeking. Like your last show. Yeah. I'm sorry. After that, oh, it's just, no, best as it's gonna be. I don't see the fucking point. I'm at the top of the mountain. Can't keep climbing from here. <laughs> the, ma- more like the mound. Yeah. You're on the top. <laughs> it's all well, downhill. Well, I made it, to the, made it to the bottom of the mountain. One step Screw down it. from here, and we're all a back rock bottom. How steep again. this is, Jesus. <laughs> no one told me. Ah oh, oh, man, this is such a bad idea. This podcast is the worst. Who thought of this? I enjoy art. <laughs> I don't know. You thought that it would be fun to talk about No, not art. you. I mean, just in general. Oh, just I go see. to the basement and talk to someone. All right. Did Luke, I think I hate myself, too. Did much. Luke use smarter <laughs> terms than me when he was No, Luke art? was really entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> he was just all around funnier. Okay, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> finished. Sorry. Let's get back to this. <laughs> so... You paint, uh, what gave you the idea to start painting on, uh, those thrift store paint, paintings? So you'll go to the, st- so people who don't know this, by the way, S- Spencer's art's awesome. I got a lot of it in my house, and honestly, but, um, so yeah, so you'll go to the thrift store, buy that $5 generic paintings, and you'll just paint right on the frame and right on the glass. Mm-hmm. Where'd you get this? So I kind of alternate between. Because it's fucking awesome. Painting on the glass and painting underneath the glass. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys have ever like taken apart those thrift store paintings, but they're just print. That's not yeah. even painting. Yeah, you know? I it's know. not a canvas. So if you wanted to paint directly on that, it's probably going to crinkle up a little bit. And sometimes that looks good, but sometimes it looks like shit. So I painted on the glass to avoid that and also you know, avoid taking it apart. It's a better way to you know preserve the integrity of the old painting that's yeah. also not you know, built very well in the first place, so you just want to keep it all together. Um, I guess to answer your question in a small statement is frugality. I wanted to, you know... We still have 30 minutes, so... Well, I, I, I know this. <laughs> I guess the best way to answer a question sometimes is simply, so frugality. It's cheap, you know, it's a really... Uh, and it's really kitschy, and those things go together really well. And I yeah. think that that kind of art style is something that is still appreciated in the world. And, um, I mean... 
best of all, it's affordable for anybody who wants to buy it. So yeah. even after I make a couple of these, I bang some of these out. I'll sell them for like 30 bucks a piece. Anybody can buy a $30 painting. Yeah. Every, anybody would. I mean, if I get it out there enough. Well, I always like to sell cheap too. Is I always tell people, I, I'm, I'm, I'm painting to sell it, not to make money. Mm -hmm. is is i'll go down to whatever price you really want if you really want it in your house because i'd rather it be in your house than in my studio yeah like a hundred percent and i work a full-time job i don't need i don't need your hundred dollars to survive it's nice mm -hmm. but yeah so um, I, I i try to sell it whatever i need to do i mean on the other hand i have been accepting commissions and people sometimes will uh, yeah you've been doing a couple of those. they'll um insist upon giving me more because they feel like it's worth more that's awesome it's that's awesome. never happened to me <laughs> i mean it's awesome for me but think about the culture setting that we're in where people think that way yeah the mafia and like weird i, I don't know just like a uh, different countries mafias run the art you know industry basically all right they they run the galleries I they just learned this they set the prices yeah. I, I watched a two minute video about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an expert. It was an Adam, I should know. I'm an it expert. Was, it was an Adam's ruin it was an Adam ruins everything too. So oh, okay. basically an expert, yeah. No, I just I no, but I I've been seeing like, you know, the this you know, these examples for a long time and it bothers me. Because yeah. I don't think that's what art should be about. I don't think it should be about money. I mean no. the old classics, like I guess sure, put a price tag on them because yeah. the guy's dead and because they're cherished but in the i mean in the better sense of the i mean i guess the bed the better part of the industry is that uh, museums most museums are free of admission and they have Not a lot of them are yeah. they, they have a lot of those classics so you can appreciate them everybody can mm. i just wish that like the entire industry was like that because i think that's what the point of art is for everyone to be able to appreciate uh, any piece, basically. Yeah. I mean, if you well, want... Well, that's one good thing about... When you purchase a piece and you put it in your house, you can appreciate it. And mm -hmm. your friends can appreciate it if they come over. Yeah. But, I mean, that kind of... Uh, uh, narrows the window... Well, that's that why a lot of people, if I, if I went and bought a, a Basquiat, which, you know, when I'm rich or famous, I'm totally going to do because he's my favorite painter. But uh, if I go and buy a Basquiat... I'm never going to have that at my house. It's now part of the Marco Viglio collection, and it's going to be traveling to every single museum, and they're mm -hmm. going to pay me for it. Yeah, the museums will pay you. The yeah. government will pay the museums. Yeah, which is, it's and a hell of a racket, mm -hmm. but also think about that investment. Is I'm When people are like, I believe you just spent a million dollars on a Basquiat. First off, I don't give a crap, dude. It's Basquiat. And uh, second off, how much are you going to make? And at the same time, how much are you gonna like your your kids are gonna sell it for probably even more, but not only that, but you're also now sharing with everybody, hmm. and that's awesome. I guess I changed my mind. I like ninety eighty to ninety percent of how the art community works right now. Yeah, I like that you know you can go into a gallery in downtown Fargo. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. There's a lot of them, They're and you nice can just too. be like, hey, can I hang some of my pieces? And they say, show me what you got, and you show them. If they like it, they hang it up. And if you sell stuff. Did you ever get a portfolio, like a nice, here's my pieces? Never did. I've never done that. I think me and you think, were in the same boat of no portfolio, that, no website. See, I think that a portfolio is a good step. And I think it's still a good, like, classic move to pull yeah. that out. Because those are the two but, uh, things you on the apparently other hand, need. A lot of people are okay with just looking at stuff on your phone, too. Yeah, which what I usually do. And also, phones actually take pretty good... No way, man. Really? Who started early? There's gonna be some cut time. Mm. Oh wow, this might be a this might be a one fifteen one. No, unless do you think we can squeeze out thirty more minutes? Whenever you want to be done. Right. We'll see. I'm tired. I'm, uh, but I'm sick of this. <laughs> <laughs> done. <laughs> I already said I'm done. No, I already just, say you I'm done. I'm mostly just hot, and I feel like I'm running out of stuff. To oh, do. dude, I just drip in here. Like it. Like I get so sweaty. I can't wait for like winter for the podcast. I think it's gonna be a lot easier. Yeah, I just. Just, yeah, just, oh, it's hot in here, open the window. Open the window. Uh, anyways, I can't believe Kitten has been sleeping on that duffel bag this whole time. Our voices are soothing for him. Yeah, Kitten, soothe. Be soothed. Um, okay, let's talk, uh, music. Okay, uh, I know you listen to a lot. You got, uh, kind of a all-over genre mm -hmm. type. Uh, how much does that 
move into your art. Because for me, it does. I always listen I'll, to music. I'll, play, I'll even art. play off lyrics because mm-hmm. I use a lot of words. So I'll hear a lyric I really like and then I'm, I'll change the words around and make it fit the theme of the piece. Mm-hmm. But I'll, you know, I'll just like some, you know, certain things. Uh, do you have, do you, do you find inspiration from the music or do you just find rhythm from it when you're painting? Yes, both. Yeah. Oh, I mean, both. I think that in order to start uh, painting in general, you have to have Inspirado. Uh, in, initiative, yeah, and yeah. In, in, inspirado, I guess. If that's, that's the a, that's, that's the word. Yeah, it's uh, the tenacious D. Search for inspirado. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like I like uh, when I get that feeling because I can kind of hold on to it by myself. If I think about something that I want to paint, and or if I just think, man, I really need to start painting again, I'll hold on to that feeling for like a good day and a half. Before it like starts to dissipate, so oh. for that whole day and a half, I'm pretty much just beating myself up. So yeah, you need to get into your studio. Yeah, but when I actually get in there, I of course I'm gonna hook up my headphones because I I don't I mean we have a shared studio mm-hmm. and I don't really like a lot of uh, static around me, especially yeah. with the noise shows that are going on in Seagrave right now. Yeah, I mean it's almost always abandoned still mm-hmm. Seagrave. Um, but Intel is not. Yeah, I'm right next to Michael, and he's some. He's, he's like he's usually in there. He's there the most. He's of all pretty. Of us, yeah, yeah. I he, he I, I think he's in there more than anyone. And else. he makes and he makes audio art, yeah. which I respect. But I don't want to have that carry over into what I'm making. Yeah. So that's why I mostly just listen to my music. I guess uh, it just sets me at ease, lets me be free minded. Yeah. And. Yeah, like you said, gives me a little bit of rhythm so I can keep going. Like if I'm listening to a really uh, fast pe- fast paced song, I'll just like fill in a painting basically. Yeah. Do a background first. And then once it gets to like some of the more slow stuff, I'll be more meticulous after that. Okay. Right. Yeah, no, and I, I feel you. So yeah, so you're going off rhythm, but also you need need something going in your mind as well mm. yeah no that's pretty good yeah uh it gets the right cogs going while stopping the other cogs if that makes sense you you want to stop thinking about other stuff mm-hmm. so you put on your music and then the music helps you think about art i guess that's pretty good uh do you ever get like a you'll see an image just randomly and you're like ooh, screenshot that or save that to my phone because i'm gonna paint something like that later I got three I'm waiting on right now to, oh. to get down to the studio. I've never really done that. Oh, sometimes, I do that sometimes I, I'll just uh, well, okay. So right now I'm working on commissions, and people will send me which pictures is awesome of what they want, basically. Yeah. And um, so I found out that I'm really crappy at painting dogs. Dogs are hard. <laughs> Somebody wanted me to do a portrait of their dog, and I'm just like. Uh, this is my kryptonite. I, I, I accepted it because I was thinking, oh, I do portraits all the time. Do, and do human dog. portraits are fun. Because even, like, I don't, you know, do realism. Yeah. You, know, but you play it, with it. But yeah, it looks you... really close. And that is where the secret of, I think, my art's integrity is. Because it's uh, not... Uh, photorealistic, but it's realistic enough where people can recognize themselves and then and see still, aspects. And then you themselves. also have your mm-hmm. your style on top of it, which is fun. I did yeah. a painting for one of my uh, coworkers uh, named Kevin, and it was uh, re- it, he wanted to look like a communist dictator, beloved leader poster, basically. <laughs> and I just thought that sounds awesome. I'm gonna yeah. do that. I mean, so I looked up pictures of like old posters of Stalin. And then I looked, and then I uh, took a picture of him drinking a PBR, and I made that into a portrait. And it was all it had a red orange, like a reddish orange background. Yeah. And he was wearing, you know, one of those. So Russian you played with, hats. and you played with uh, the communism of red. I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah. Red and yellow. Those yep. were the main colors, and then yep. uh, all the darks were actually just brown because I just mixed the red and yellow with black. Yeah. And uh, uh, he was wearing like one of those kushka caps. I yeah, the, the weird, you know, the, the almost yeah. square looking Russian yeah. cap. Everybody knows what we're talking about. Yep. With the uh, star, the with a star on it. Oh, the star, yeah. yeah. And uh, I didn't put any hammers and sickles on there because I feel like that would just be too much hammering in the nail too much. But it turned out... Sickling in the nail too it, much? Yeah. That's what a sickle's for. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it actually... Uh, I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry. It, uh, I got nervous. It represents, you know, the working man of farming and yeah, I know. hammering. 
<laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> What's that just... I literally... Did you just now catch that, Danny? <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh, what the heck? No, that's just the tools the army uses, I had a actually. friend who had a... Who got a tattoo of the... It was a hammer, but it was a... It was a pulley system instead of a sickle across from it. So it was like a simple machine, like... Like, gear structure pulley yeah. system. Which I thought was like, oh, all right. Just moving on up, like... Going up to the industrial age? Technical. <laughs> technical communist. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that symbol means, but I always thought it was a cool tattoo. And it was red, too. Somebody put a hammer and sickle uh, decal on the front of their um, really nice uh, Porsche, I think. Hmm. And it just looked like crap. I don't know why Ooh. anybody would do that. Oof. Not a Porsche. I, um, wore, I wore a hammer and sickle shirt car. for my uh, high school pictures, like my senior pictures. And I forgot... <laughs> About that, and then I, um, I like just went to my ten year reunion and uh, looked, you know, through the senior yearbook. I didn't know they put it in, so there's literally me wearing like this disgusting suit jacket and ripped jeans, and I had a huge mohawk, and you can see my hammer and sickle shirt underneath the suit jacket, <laughs> and I broke into the recycling plant like over near like Tenth Street, mm-hmm. so I'm standing in front of a, cy- a, a fence like a cyclone fence, and then behind it is just like stacks of uh pop cans like so i'm like look like i just like broke into like trash <laughs> and i just like got my hammer and sickle and i'm not even smiling i'm just like looking off in the distance like huh <laughs> and, and that made it into the yearbook and i was like holy crap i didn't know they that made it like that's Sounds weird. like a good picture i'm not surprised yeah i got I, i'll show you it I, I, I took a picture of the yearbook it'd be so funny if they put that it. like amongst the senior baby pictures <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so i remember it was north high and i remember north high uh, a couple years ago somebody uh wanted to do a picture of him holding his like ak-47 or whatever it was and it was ar-14 let that fly. and then they wanted the and he was standing in front of american flag mm-hmm. and he was wearing like a like you know a a sleeveless shirt with like an eagle on it or something you know he just got all out and uh and it, they didn't want they were like hey you can hand these out but we're not gonna put it in the yearbook and i thought they didn't allow mine so it was like they didn't allow mine for hammer and sickle it's just what you put up with man you didn't have a gun yeah but that's, they did allow that's mine. the only reason they didn't have that or do they really st- look i bet they literally look like gun or anything racist no gun or anything. like it's like they probably didn't even notice the hammer and sickle i bet mm. yeah so anyways probably um i'm really careful with symbolism now too really yeah. i love symbolism so the thing about it symbiotics is, i mean that class when i was in college i got caught bad <laughs> oh really caught big time i was using the anarchy symbol you know yeah i in, love it in my self-portrait and i i think i mostly did it just because i thought it looked cool Mm -hmm. and it was just such a dumb idea because my we had a guest teacher that a guest professor that was like critiquing our self-portraits and she and she was kind of just like you know saying this and that about everybody's i didn't think she'd really concentrate too much on mine when i brought it up and i was just like it is mine and she was like why do you have an anarchy symbol do you believe in anarchy i'm like yeah Sure. And I was and then she started asking me about it and oh, we came no. to the conclusion that I don't support anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what anarchy is. World alone. <laughs> and I just I literally just made a stupid stupid self portrait with a uh, symbol that had nothing to do with me and I, I still I, sneak I, I ended up times. I ended up scratching out the anarchy and oh. kept keeping the portrait. Because I would have the kept it now good. because it symbolizes how you were a confused teenage boy. I think I should have kept it too because it symbolizes my biggest failing in, like, in general. I mean... And wow, that's your biggest failing? Basically, whenever... Like, this is something that I'm good at that I think about myself. You yeah. know, painting. And, you know, thinking about, you know, what painting... What I'm, what I'm painting, what it's about, what it's supposed to, like, drive out of people, what it's mm-hmm. supposed to in- incite... But this was the one time where I just failed hardcore because I did it because I wanted to look cool. I yeah. Did, and that was the dumbest thing I've ever done. That's that's not a good look for art. I mean, unless you're Andy Warhol. He literally, that was his style is I'm going to, I'm going to print cool things and that's how I'm going to become famous. And that's what he did. He's yeah. like, I'm going to print money but and he didn't celebrities. Print, that's the difference though. He didn't incorporate himself. 
You know, yeah, no, I don't think he ever he, did sell portraits. He didn't Maybe self-indulge. He, did. he was a very uh, shy and self. Uh, um, He's a very weird guy. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't really like himself. He thought he was ugly. Yeah, he did, and he wore like he he wasn't even bald, but he wore the wig to cover his, his hair. His hair because and it then was he also like, kind of wispy. And... Yeah, and then he also wore the big sunglasses to cover his face. Yeah, and yeah, he hated his nose. He, I mean, his mom oh, always thought he was he very didn't. sweet. Uh, quiet kid, what? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, just kidding. <laughs> um, all right, he, yeah, but I, yeah. I, can I tell my favorite Warhol joke? Sure. It's it's a, it's not real. It, it's probably real Warhol. Actually, I got a real Warhol one, but I was gonna tell David Bowie playing Warhol in the movie Basquiat. And if you ever see the movie Basquiat, do yourself a favor. I've seen it. I love that movie. Yeah. Uh, it's also written by, uh, written and directed by uh, Julius Julian. Schnabel, Julian Schnabel, another painter from that time, and he, he's a big dude in real life, and he had Gary Oldman portraying him, and it's like, yeah, that's not freaking wrong, <laughs> but anyways, uh, like, dude, you're a big old dude, and you got, you, you cast Gary Oldman as yourself, come on, but, uh, Scary but, Gary Oldman, I love Gary Oldman, but anyways, um, and I've seen these, uh, have you ever seen Warhol's Copper Pissings? Um, they're amazing. Things. Okay, so they're these big slabs of copper about the size of this floor. Mm -hmm. So huge. You know, uh, 10 feet by 20 feet or more, 10 feet by 15. I don't know how big this room is. Mm -hmm. Probably not that big. But, uh, but anyways, uh, but the, he'd do, do these huge pieces of copper, and then he would have his assistant drink this beer that gets him to pee, and then he would direct his assistant on where to pee on this copper. And the acidity of his urine would erode the copper. So he would do this for like weeks. And then they wouldn't clean it off. They'd just use the leave the urine and on the copper. It, yeah. So it would discolor the copper. It would it would warp the copper. And they're just gorgeous. Honestly, these are beautiful and that's how they did it. What is there weirdo. peeing on copper? I think it's amazing. <laughs> Why but didn't it, he just pee on it himself? That's the joke. Why? All right, let me get to it. Let me get to it. So so um David Bowie playing Warhol is is watching his assistant pee on copper. Oh yeah, I remember and, that. Yeah, it, it, so then then uh, Basquiat played by Jeffrey R uh, Wright. Oh, I'm gonna mess that up. Anyways, awesome actor. I'm, I can mm. I hate that I'm forgetting his name right now. Um, playing Basquiat comes in like, hey, what's he doing? He's like, oh, you know, um, he he discovered this Mexican beer that gets him to drink a lot. So we've been or pee. gets him to pee a lot. So he's been peeing on this copper, and it's it's been. Doing pretty good stuff. And then Basquiat like, looks at it and goes, why don't you do it yourself? I don't really like beer. <laughs> <laughs> love Warhol. That's funny. <laughs> um, so another good one. Do you know, yeah, I love that joke. It's amazing. But all right, so you, you know Jasper Johns, painter? Uh, yeah. Did the big Target, which is one of, in, um, when I saw, I went to a big pop art show in Seattle, and when I saw the first... Like, first time I saw the Target from Jasper Johns, it blew my mind. Hmm. It's a gorgeous piece to see in real life because it's paint it's just caked on and it just draws you to it. It's a gorgeous piece. In, piece. But anyways, um, this is a real Warhol. Somebody's interviewing him and they want to get his take on artists of the day. Yeah. And it's like, what do you think about Jasper Johns? And he goes, oh, I like Jasper. He goes, really? What do you like about him? Oh, it's cooking. <laughs> what? <laughs> so not even about art. I thought that was amazing because he would lampoon every interview he was in. He would mess with the interviewer, you know, or or somebody would be like, "All right, so what'd you make? Why'd you make this piece?" He goes, oh, "Why'd you wear that shirt today? It looks great." Like he would just like interview them and try to get out of it. <laughs> oh man, uh, as much I as I'm not accept a, the interview. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Just to mess with people. Oh, this is Warhol. Uh, but yeah, as much as I, his art's pretty, like, besides, I said I like the copper pissings, but for the most part, his stuff's pretty mediocre, at least in my eyes. But mm. uh, but I thought he was hilarious. I actually love Warhol as a person. Yeah. Um, well, I liked his, I think that his work, my favorite part about it is probably the most basic part about it that you see. Mm -hmm. And that's that it's colorful, vibrant. Oh, yeah. I love that. He loves his colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I do too. And I, yeah. that's kind of where, that's kind of where my art goes too. I love vibrant colors and it's probably kind of a, 
like I got one tool in my toolbox, you know, and it's a hammer, and that hammer just is bright colors. Sometimes <laughs> that's what it feels like because I, if I ever paint something that's like dark and depressing, I'm just like, this looks like garbage. Why am I doing this? I'm yeah. Like, and then I just paint over with bright colors. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what I do. That's like all my style. Um, did I, did I tell you that we, we had one of your pieces hanging in our living room in the last house and then Leslie's mom was just so offended by it. Which and, piece? And we had to move it and now it's in the, our bedroom and it's not hanging up. <laughs> and I'm pretty sad about it. <laughs> I'm sad about it too. Which piece? It's the one. You get it, you painted on the glass over like Jesus and his three wise men, and you painted a Tyrannosaurus wearing a pulpit. Jesus hat. wasn't walking with his wise men. He was walking done. with his disciples. All right, whatever. I don't know anything <laughs> what about Jesus. What are you talking about? His wise men. Right? Those guys were. Dead. Oh, they're the ones who came, the brought ones the myrrh came, yeah. and the frankincense. Whatever. They didn't see Jesus after that. <laughs> in a ways. Yeah, it's got a. All right, so Jesus and his his uh, disciples, apostles, mm-hmm. whatever. Screw him. But <laughs> so you painted a Tyrannosaurus wearing a Pope hat with an AK-47. And sneakers. And sneakers over it. I'll show you the piece. <laughs> and Leslie's mom stared at it for about five minutes. And, she, and I was trying to be like, yeah, my buddy Spencer Bailey. And she's just like, like, and then after a couple minutes, she goes, gotta get rid of this. <laughs> this can't be up here. And I was like. How is it like, even offensive, though? What, what's offensive about it? <laughs> Explain to me. Seriously. To a Christian? Okay, so... Has you, have you showed your lady that? I know she's pretty I could religious. Show, I could show her to it. I could show it to her. I she, bet she won't find it as clever I as bet, I do. Well, I bet she won't like it. In <laughs> but I, I want to know what's offensive about Cause, that. Because for one... You painted over white Jesus. Okay. <laughs> I did. Okay. Thank you, Danny. For, no, look. Correction. I did not paint over. Jesus. No, no. He, he, I no, painted he's a, adjacent too. Yeah, he's adjacent. He's joining the scene. He's joining the scene. There was like a big negative space with this big scene of not even Galilee. That's not what Galilee looks like. Okay, I don't know where the fuck Jesus and his apostles were, but it looks like they're in a rainforest, Montana in or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where they were. Out in Central Africa. Yeah, it was just like <laughs> stupid. So I was. So I was like, that's not where Jesus would hang out and so well, if we're just if we're just in fantasy land we just put a t-rex there next to him with an ak-47 uh, and he could be like his bodyguard or something the pope the pope sent him back so he gave the t-rex the hat oh and he gave him some sneakers to protect his feet from the rocky roads <laughs> all right we I, saved this podcast I can we did this, nailed it we saved it i'm being i'm being kind of facetious because i could point out a couple of ways that that painting is offensive, but <laughs> my my problem with it is <laughs> that I bet the most offensive portion of it is that it incorporates Christianity with and the theory dinosaurs. of dinosaur evolution. Yep, and oh. I think that's what people d- would dislike yep. most. Which is about what it. I like about it. And I, you know, Leslie's the one who wanted it, <laughs> but she loves it. I, I didn't does. even try to do that, really. I didn't even think about evolution or dinosaurs or anything while I was doing this. I just painted a T-Rex. Because T-Rexes are fun reasons. to paint. I oh. wanted to paint that with a... And then I put a Pope hat on it because I oh, thought that'd be good. Also, cool. your Trump one. If you, I can't believe you haven't sold that yet. Oh, the Trump portrait? Yeah. I gave that to Katie. I know. But I can't believe you didn't it. was like a present. It. it was a present for Katie and Zach, and Zach really hated it. And then <laughs> Katie broke up with Zach, and now it's Katie's. And she likes it. Yeah. So well, it's an awesome. Out. It's an awesome <laughs> portrait of Trump. Um, yeah, I, I actually. So I posted uh, your piece and a couple other pieces when I was putting up uh, the last Seagrave show we mm-hmm. did. And I had that saved, like, in a, in a folder. And then somebody was going through my stuff and goes. I want this Trump piece of yours. I'm like, no, that's actually my buddy Spencer Kelly. And she's like, where can I get this? And I was like, I'm pretty sure he gave it to somebody. And she's like, oh my God, tell him to do more political, like, I could jack-o'-lantern be- portraits. And I was like, dude, if, honestly, and I thought about that. I was like, and if you if you grab from both sides and don't just do Republican, but grab, oh, like, no, how great would it be for every person running if you did a show of just warped, messed up of all the people in the primaries. I think it'd be great. <laughs> I, I think, think it'd be awesome. A, really good show, a messed up Bernie, a messed up Biden, because I'm assuming they're trying to run, and then tr- do another Trump. 
mm-hmm. and then you know grab you know Christy already looks like a, a demented looking mess up fever I feel dream. Like so half of those people are gonna drop out before the next election because they. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that uh, my favorite part about the political climate, and that's why I want to do this. But my favorite part about our current political climate is that it just seems like anything goes, and the old rules don't apply anymore. And maybe yeah. that's a good thing, but at the same time, it's a really, really fucking bad thing. <laughs> we can't just reinvent the whole system just because, like, a lot of people like the way this guy yells. Yeah. He, it's he, stupid. He yells amazing, though. He does yell amazing. Uh, I will, so I will grant him that. I'll, I'll tell you what scares me the most, and I would have said this about any whatever color or tie he wore. If he was a Democratic person... I'd say this too. This has nothing to do with right or left, but trying to discredit the media is terrifying to me. Like when, when, when he, and again, this could be anything. If Hillary said this, I'd be mad about it too. But if, if when this thing came out recently, Google, Google, somebody looked at all the uh, news feeds that Google gives you. Mm -hmm. But of course this person didn't realize it's, it, it reads all your internet search and it tries to just feed it to you. So if you do constantly look up Fox News, Google will only show you Fox News things. Mm-hmm. But anyways, so she looked and the majority of it was left stuff. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. He now, Trump has to tweet about it because, you know, he has something to do when he's pooping, I guess. Yeah. Uh, he has to tweet. And he says... Or everything. <laughs> uh, Google is pushing fake news down our throat. But it's not fake news because it's inaccurate, which some of it probably is. It's fake news because it's opposing. Mm-hmm. That is scary. Yeah. And it could be either way. Again, we could flip this. It's not because it's a, it's a Republican guy doing it. I don't really care about sides. I don't like either of them. Well, Fox has kind of abandoned Trump, too, though. Uh, if you're here and there. I mean, Fox and friends still like him. Uh, okay, yeah, but... He's done some stuff recently that they can't refute, and they yeah, have to, it's hard. And, and they have to like be criti- critical to him about it. Yeah. And when they do that, he lashes right back. So mm-hmm. now they're kind of like best friends, enemies. At yeah, this point. frenemies. Uh, are we at about one fifteen? All right, we can call it at one fifteen. Okay. I just, I might want a nap before. No, we only got a nap. What, two hours? We got two hours? Oh, my God. I'm showering. <laughs> Definitely showering before Jacob gets here. Well, it was... You a, got work to do, Dan. It was a pleasure oh, interviewing you today, Mark. Yeah, thanks. Uh, what was your name again? Spencer Kelly. All right, Spencer Kelly. This is my uh, podcast. It's called dicksanddongs.com. <laughs> uh, where's your art? You hanging up anytime soon? I am going to try to bust out a couple new pieces, and then Good. I guess I'm going to check out with the Red Raven. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, if you want to do a pair show, I'm down because I've been meaning to get a. I want to rock out. Uh, same thing. I want to rock out a couple pieces and talk to Petra and get my yearly show. Okay. Because I like to do at least one show a year. Yeah, if we if we each make six pieces, I think that that'd be a good. I got three out. ideas right now. All right. Um, and if I do them um, this week, which is what I want to do, I'll let you know. All right. And I think I got some other stuff I was just recently working on that hasn't hung up yet. So, um. And I want to paint over some old stuff, so... Yeah. All right, um... But I will continue painting, that is a certainty. You know, uh, this isn't as horrible as I said it was going to be. I think that was a pretty good talk. Uh, thanks for uh, passing out on my couch, waking up and doing the podcast with me, and uh, have a good rest of your day. Yeah, you too. It was, it was a pleasure. Nice. Good afternoon. Boop. Spaghetti. Boop, boop, Spaghetti. Boop. Spaghetti. Boop, 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 boop. boop, boop. Meatball. Boop. There you guys go. That was my talk with Spencer Kelly. He just left my basement, despite it starting pretty slow because we were hungover. It ended pretty strong. I really liked Spencer. Feel like uh, you know, got a pretty good sense of who that guy is now. So until next week, not a hundred percent sure who the uh, interview is going to be with next week. I think it's going to be Jacob Harchi. So until then, you know, enjoy yourself. You know, don't. Don't get attacked by any alligators, especially this far out of their territory. It would be weird. All right. See you guys. Is that a fart? No. <laughs> I think that was the door, but it sounded like a fart. <laughs> Did you fart? Yeah. <laughs> we got it.